with IG and looks pretty good, but how is he going to face up against a guy like Boogie as we enter Champions League? Yeah, it, it's really interesting to see the swap being made. You know, Zhu Hao only playing about four games throughout their regular split and playoffs. You know, he didn't play at all in play-ins, so getting subbed in, you're thinking, okay, well, maybe they're giving him a little bit of experience on the international stage, but yet here he is again on day two after a solid performance on day one. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, for our second game of the day. Fong Fu Buffalo versus Flash Wolves, Zero, Zhu Hao, Nal, Big Coral, and Pallet on the blue side, while Hanabi, Boogie, rather, Betty, and Xiao C on the red. Now, what's really interesting about both these teams is they actually share a lot of the same champion pool. Uh, things like the Rise, the Varus, the Galio, the Kaiser, uh, all these picks are really popular for both these teams. Some of the differentials come in things like the Akali. Hanabi has shown a lot of proficiency on it, whereas Nor, while trying to get his hands on it sometimes, doesn't have the same level of impact. Whereas for Zeros, the Jace is something that you really want to avoid giving to him because of how powerful it is, which is why we're seeing that ban come out from the side of the Flash Wolves. Yeah, and Hanabi is, is a very interesting player for me because he's been a bit of a, a mixed bag internationally. When you think back to last year's MSI, he had an outstanding performance, you know, notably his Yasuo. Uh, he was getting a lot of attention for playing carries and being so dominant. Then Worlds came around and everyone's like, all right, let's go, come on, bring on the carries. And he was playing tanks and not really having that same level of success. He certainly was underperforming both in the summer split in the LMS as well as at Worlds. And here he is once more at MSI uh, and we're Going to get to see what kind of performance he's going to turn in. Well, now he's picked up what we could assume would be an Akali for him, a champion he's played seven times over the course of this split, where it's only been seen once mm -hmm. in the hands of Rather. Now, Rather, of course, a very mechanically proficient player, but not necessarily someone we look at to be very lane dominant. So two flex picks now locked in. Have to see who is going to take each of these respective melee champions. Now, I do like the fact that Fongvu Buffalo were able to get themselves the Rek'Sai, which is a strong early game jungler, which is where I feel Zhu Hao performs the best. The concern is where the fact that you give away both Akali and a Silas, both very powerful picks. You're expecting the Akali to go into the hands of Hanabi. We already talked about how this is a champion that he likes to play. It's something that he has had a lot of highlight reel plays on already. And I feel like that giving it over to him is always a risk. But fortunately for Fong Fu Buffalo, they then left the rise open. The next best bi uh, big flex pick that actually does very well into both these champions. Look, everybody gets a flex pick, Betty. Those are the rules. Now you get your priority support, you get your priority jungler, you get a rise, you give up two flex picks on the opposite side. If this costs them, we're gonna have to see. But now if the Nautilus gets locked in, the mystery of the flex pick will be gone. We will know immediately where this is going to go. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly the case, unless there's going to be something extremely crazy. You know, they're going to flex one of these in the jungle, but I'm not expecting that. You know, you do have a little bit of diversity between these two squads, though. Obviously, they match the support picks, but there is, you know, a jungle to be banned from the side of PvP. I'm expecting them to focus there. On the side of Flash Wolves, they can then focus on some of the solo lane picks that would perhaps be coming out for Null, uh, as they have already locked in both their solo laners. So that's where I think a lot of the focus will go. Neither team has actually picked up their bot laner, and there haven't been too many bans down in that direction, so picks along the lines of Varus, yep. I do think, are going to be really high priority. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I think Varus is one of those champions that both AD carries want to get their hands on. Um, but as you mentioned, it seems that solo laners for the side of Flash Wolves, with the Zoe being taken off the board, I uh, wouldn't be surprised to maybe see something like a LeBlanc also taken away from the hands of Nor, so that Akali can be in a slightly better position. Uh, maybe even the Vladimir as well, if they are concerned about it. But Interesting, they're actually going to pivot and take the virus off the board themselves, even though they had the first pick. And when it makes a lot of sense when you look at Big Core and what he has been successful on, but I do feel like there was the option to take it away. Maybe just looking to get Vettius that comfort, or Vettius, Betty that comfort pick, <laughs> Ezreal, as we continue in the draft. It would be interesting if they actually, you know, ban the Varus, take the Lucian, and deny the Lucian Braum, as well as kind of one of the answers that you might want to grab that up with, which could perhaps be... Uh, that Varus, but instead they're going to go to Callista here. Very interesting. So Callista has actually always been banned away from the Flash Wolves because it is Betty's most successful champion. Domestically, he is undefeated on the champion. It is something that has shown so much respect towards him, and teams just refuse to let him have it. So the moment I saw the Varus ban, I was thinking, okay, he must be focusing on this yeah. direction, and when paired up with a Nautilus, you have a very potent kill lane towards the bottom half. Five of games, 100% win percentage, 11.2 KDA. This man has some insane stats. We're going to have to see if you can replicate it up against Big Coro and the lethal threat of the Braum Lucian lane. These are two very explosive bot lanes. The Aatrox, though, will be the final pick on the side of Fongu Buffalo. Yeah, and if you're going to go Zin Zhao here alongside that Nautilus, those ganks are so easy to set up on that bottom side. So much crowd control, you know, so much early aggression that is potentially coming out here from the Zin Zhao. And this feels like this is a Flash Wolves lineup to really speed up the pace of the game. They have been receiving criticism for playing too slowly, sitting too far back and allowing teams to kind of, you know, kind of 
Impessor will on them. And this is a game where you think that they are going to speed it up. They are going to get aggressive and really try to make things happen. But there is a lot of early game power on the other side as well because it's Lucian Braum they are going up. Rek'Sai can certainly match those ganks. And that is why I think this jungle matchup is going to be so important because whoever has that counter gank, whoever gets you know, kind of that second engage, usually comes out on top in, in those sorts of fights. So brawling is what I'm hearing a lot of is there. Yeah. I'm expecting some kind of fighting. I'm expecting a lot of uh, blood to be shed on the rift. And both these teams are zero and two. They want to be still making a run for that fourth place spot. They still want to be going to the playoffs. So finding a win here is definitely a very important. And I love that we're seeing potentially the return for PvP to a more aggressive style and the adaptation for Flash Wolves to be willing to match fire with fire. As you said, this first one is so important, not just for the tournament, not just for trying to secure that fourth place spot or make it into the bracket stage, but also for regional pride. Once again, the VCS has been rising. The LMS has been struggling. A lot of things I feel like they are on the line in terms of regional pride, regional strength. Who will remain in that fifth place spot by the end of this tournament? I think that is the question that everyone is asking between these two regions. For now, though, have to wonder where are the junglers going to go? What kind of impact will they have on this early game? And here we are, PVB on the blue side, Flash Wolves on the red. Once again, both teams 0-2 after difficult starts. Will we see more from the Flash Wolves today as an unsurprising Too bomb? Too young to die. <laughs> <laughs> One death already in the game, brutal. <laughs> Earliest first blood. Yeah, very, very early. But, you know, one of the things that really stands out to me when I'm looking over the side of Flash Wolves is how poor their siege is, how much of a Brawly comp this is. This is four melee champions and a very short-range marksman. This is fight it out. Engage, engage, engage. And we're going to see if they're going to be able to do that because this is the kind of lineup that looks amazing from ahead and awful if you fall behind. There's very little wave clear. There's, you know, not really a, a lot of separate win conditions besides just run at them and, <laughs> and hope you win. Yeah, I agree. Whereas for Fong Fu Buffalo, they have a little bit more options. They can play the one through one. Mm -hmm. You can send Ryze off to one side lane, uh, the Aatrox off to the other. They both have teleport, so it's very easy for them to converge. They have a very solid mid-game spike at around two items, so they can look to force fights then. So I don't know if PvB need to be aggressive in the early game, but if they are going to be a a aggro in the early game, then I want to see plays up towards the top side of the map. Try and put the Akali behind, play around the Aatrox, who is a strong laner, and utilize some of the mobility that Rek'Sai has to get Xeros ahead up towards the top side of the map. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be so interesting to see if, if they're able to do that, because you know, certainly you can see the one through one on the side of PvP. Flash Wolves do have double TP on their solo, so they can, they can look to match that. But, you know, the wave clear, certainly a really big thing. Yes, Silas can Q max, but this is not the, the kind of wave clear that you're wanting to depend on if you fall behind. And I do think solo lane advantages are going to become a really big deal, giving you access to those neutral objectives, where I think both these teams are, are going to be wanting to fight it out. And already a small duo lane advantage for the side of Flash Wolves. They got to go to lane first, did not leech for their jungler, so we'll get priority over this wave. Pow and Big Core, though, still not afraid to trade, still happy to use the concussive blows from Braum to try to fire back. But Halo Blades Callista can be so oppressive. Yeah, I really like Halo Blades Callista for the laning phase, uh, largely because it allows you to get uh, a lot of Ren stacks out very, very quickly, which means that you can go for those very short, very uh, punchy kind of trades because of the amount of extra burst that you can get. So the Lucian Braum have to be careful of these early exchanges, but note the exhaust being run by Pallet. Very aware of the amount of kill threat on the side of Flash Wolves will mitigate a lot of early potential plays. Yeah, and I mean, if you overextend on that Nautilus, if you do dive too far forward, there is certainly the potential for the Lucian Braum to turn those fights around on you. Nautilus is really not that tanky. Once the Aftershock does expire, the exhaust can help you to buy some time. Very effective against Callista. So it will be interesting to see how that lane is playing out. For now, we keep our eyes on Ubi as he moves down to the blue buff. We'll get level three soon. Can look to pressure it out on the bottom side of the map. Rexai already taking that bot side. Scuttlecraft, though, puts him in a comfortable position in terms of vision control. May make it a bit more difficult to find a solid gank path. But that Zin you talked about, if he finds those early ganks, this champion very quickly can take over a game. Now, I will say, we expected brawling with three minutes in. No one has died yet. So we're just a little disappointed. But of course, jungler's already making their move. You can see Boogie making his way towards the bot side as we expected. They want to try and get this duo ahead. But PvP, very aware that a gank could be coming through, trying to play towards the back end of the wave. But this wave is actually slowly pushing towards the bot lane of Flash Wolves. Yeah. 
It's a very risky spot, honestly, you know, for, for PvP when the lane is pushing away, but here comes Boogie. Chelsea stepping forward, the dash up from Powad is there, unbreakable to block it. Powad even willing to step forward in the exchange. Well played by PvP, they knew the gank was coming and played around it perfectly. Pallet holding on to his W, waiting for the hook to come out from Chelsea, then uses it to dodge out from the crowd control, and they're able to get out of what could have been a very sticky situation. So now Zuhao makes his way towards the bot side of the map. And all this time that is being invested, you know, by the Zin Zhao, by Boogie, you've already seen Zhu Hao is up a couple camps. He had already gone back to base, picked up the Chilling Smite. So, you know, he is kind of going to be outpacing that uh, that pace that is being set here by the Zin Zhao. And he's going to have his own opportunities to look for those ganks on the bottom side of the map or try to pressure mid perhaps as well, where there is really solid gank set up here from the rise with that Rune Prison. Have to see though, what else can he get done? I think that it, the scary thing about me for Bougie and this Zin Zhao is that we've seen PvB run the Zin before themselves. Meliodas has tried it, and when it doesn't go well in the early game, things tend to fall apart very quickly. And you can see Pout and Big Coro already willing to step into that jungle, already willing to do what they have to to limit the impact here. And normally a very terrifying early game champion outside of Boogie can't really threaten this bottom side. PvP though, utilizing the bot lane pressure that they have extremely well. They moved up to try and set some vision, but now Big Coro could be in some danger as Pallet soaks up the damage. Aftershock has been used, though. Have to be careful, as you mentioned, once the tankiness falls off. Big Coro and Pallet just making great use of the concussive blows there to disengage. Yeah, exactly. You, know, you throw up the door on the side of the Braum, that slows it down. You have Guardian, you have all of that kind of damage absorption. And as long as Big Coro is behind the Braum and being able to proc the concussive blows, that plus press the attack is making those kind of trades back very, very effective. But, you know, Flash Wolves did get a base off already. It's the early tier two boots upgrade here for Betty, which is pretty standard on the Callista. It, you know, does increase the, the amount of distance you can actually hop uh, with those auto attacks and, you know, is going to be pretty effective, especially if you are going aggressive and chasing down your opponents. But already you're seeing a bit of a CS discrepancy here. will balance out a bit as Callista catches the wave, but you can see the Big Coral has been completely comfortable on the bottom side of the map, despite initial expectations for a lot of early ganks. Just Getting that one fumble does put him in a comfortable position to get a bit of lifesteal, stay safe in this lane, and just wait out the Clista. So I will say that uh, looking and thinking a little more about Flash Wolves' composition, I do think they have, uh, with the Silas and Akali, they do kind of have some scaling options. You know, mm -hmm. we talked a bit about how PvP have this 1-3-1, one, one, but when I think about it, like, Akali actually very strong in a side lane, like, especially at three items. Some pro players consider her one of, if not the strongest side lane duelist because of the amount of mobility and burst that she has, and you can never trade back against her, right, as long as her shroud is up. And on top of that, Silas, once he hits that level 16 mark, like, he scales very well with cooldowns. So once he's sitting at like 40, 45% CDR, he can just keep those rotations going. He has a lot of sustain. The shields make it extremely difficult to outtrade him as well. So like, if this game goes on long from the side of Flash Wars, why it is not ideal, because obviously you're running things like the Callista that becomes harder to execute the longer the game goes on, um, they still kind of have some fallback options. Yeah, definitely, definitely agree. I mean, both sides are going to have their options in the later stages of the game. Certainly, PvB will be looking to match that side lane pressure with that of their Rise, sure. who scales incredibly well. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a good kind of mix of strength. Both the Rek'Sai and the Zin Zhao do certainly fall off towards later stages. You know, Lucian and Callista also often struggle, especially against all these kind of bruisers and melee champions. You're relatively short range, so it's pretty easy for them to get up on top of you. And then it does become, you know, somewhat about how the supports are going to be able to peel for and protect those AD carries to be able to be that front line and, and create space for them to get damage. Small engage in the mid lane, Null. Gonna throw a few skill shots down and try to trade back if he steps forward. Fuji will most likely just try to come in on this gank, but Fuji's way there can stop rather from getting any closer and both junglers waiting, ready to go in for the 2v2, but neither one gonna pull the trigger in force. So just a lot of patience coming out from both junglers right now. Not quite the early game that we were expecting. We are expecting a little couple more ganks while a couple of attempts have been made. Nothing has already translated so far. As we see a couple more trades happen up towards the top side of the map, Hanabi does have the ultimate, but so does Xeros. So nothing gonna come off the back of that. And for PvB, we've been concerned. When the game starts to slow down, they don't look quite as Explosive, they don't look quite as confident. We saw it yesterday in their game versus Team Liquid. When they played slow, they got outclassed. When they played fast versus or fast versus IG, they were going toe-to-toe -to -toe in so many of those exchanges. Yeah, it's, it's definitely the case. And I think as a result, a lot of people are hoping that PvB does pick up the pace and try to play it a little bit faster. It did feel like that's more their wheelhouse. When you look at VCS as a region as well, it is one of the bloodiest, if not the bloodiest regions in the world too. Uh, they pay, played extremely fast throughout play-ins as far as you know being willing to take fights and trade kills. And it feels like that is where they ex excel. 
Uh, so you kind of want to see them play that style because Flash Wolves is this team that likes to sit back, that likes to get Betty to those team fights where he's going to be so good. And now the level sixes are coming through for PvP. We could just see that happen. Do they want to try and force the fight? No, they don't. They're going to take an objective and they're going to walk away, Jen. Who wants objectives? Who wants those objectives, really? There's even a Cloud Drake on the board right now, so you don't expect a lot of priority to be going on between these two teams. But, like, this is kind of where the concerns come from, right? Like, they're slowing down the game. Uh, many analysts perceive that this team doesn't know how to play the slow macro game. They're much more about the, let's get a lot of kills, let's go for a lot of fights. But so far, they're trying to use their pressure to gain advantages, get deep vision, and they're taking their time. And, and they're doing well. You know, they are, you know, even a little bit ahead on gold over Flash Wolves. So certainly I don't think there's a tremendous amount of pressure on them to get something done. And they may be able to prove a lot of people wrong by winning this style of game. If you can beat Flash Wolves at kind of what is their own style, I think yeah. that is certainly a nice statement to make. Rather, oh. though, caught between two members. He's going to have to back off Boogie here as well. But 400 gold difference already between the junglers. Boogie trying to force a lot of those early ganks has cost him dearly in early CS. So the Rek'Sai is sitting quite comfortably at this stage. And no really explosive plays yet. It feels like we've been so close. So many people have stared each other in the face and both sides have just kind of decided to back off. Yeah, and it does feel like sometimes when you get in these situations where both these teams are sitting at the bottom of the standings, no one wants to make that mistake that is really going to cost them another loss. They know they need to start picking up wins here, and perhaps as a result, they are going to play a little bit more risk-averse and trying to kind of depend on, on getting those more guaranteed plays. Yeah, and as uh, Flash Wolves is a team, that very much fits into their wheelhouse for now. They're quite content with how things are going. Even the Kalista, even though she's a very early game focused champion, I feel like at two items, she's very, very strong. So I don't think that they need to be concerned as of yet. As you see, Hanabi going for an all-in top side. He uses both stacks the ultimate. Traded, though, for the Aatrox ultimate. You see the Zinzao backing off. Zhu Hao is in the top side of the map. So have to be careful on the side of Hanabi. But at the end of the day, just an ult for ult trade. Yeah, and, and Hanabi is going to be really hard to take down here. Uh, Akali is so evasive, and both the Rek'Sai as well as this Aatrox deal physical damage. Rush the early Seekers to give you a lot of safety there. But surprise, the bottom lane is on the top side of the map. Pallet is able to land oh. across the blows. The knockout comes out. Pallet not able to connect, but it does force Hanabi to backstep. Now visible on the map. The exhaust coming out. One stack going to be there. Big Coral going to use the heal to get closer. Two taps. Piercingly lit there on the top side. The TP coming in, but it might be too little too late. Rather, has the Rexile ultimate. Could look to extend the play, but don't think it's the right choice. Zhu Hao on the top side as well. And a quick rotation from the Fongfu Buffalo allow them to find First Blood onto Hanabi, who used all of his skills to try and get that shutdown onto Xeros. Because of the trade of ultimates, neither of them was available, which then enabled Pallet to go for the all-in. Now, admittedly, three summoner spells were used in getting that kill, so hopefully Fongfu Buffalo can convert it into a lot of plates, so that that was a Oh, Pallet. Four summoner spells were used <laughs> to try and get that kill up for the top side he of the map. In that play, <laughs> most of, nobody saw it. But now, the speed of the game is starting to ramp up as the rip channel has been used on the top side. A few plates picked up by PBB. Of course, the more members here, the stronger the tower will be. But still going to try to cut through it. Those first three plates quite easy and rather just forced to back away in this trade. Yeah, in the meantime, Xiaosi and Betty are working away at that turret. They will be the first ones to knock down a turret, grabbing that first brick for themselves. But Despite the fact that Hanabi went down, this was not the most clean play here from Flash Rolls. You, you had to feel like running back into the Shroud with the Calling Active, he maybe could have just immediately flashed away, you know, had enough health to survive any potential dive, rather uses the Teleport after Hanabi has already gone down instead of early to actually protect him. So there were certainly mistakes to criticize there from Flash Rolls. But either way, it is PvB getting first blood on Lucian, which is going to be really, really nice for them and trading a tower back on the top side of the map. And Flash Rolls actually secured the first tower blood down towards the bot side of the map, but let's have a look back at how this replay played out. So, is there something you were talking about was Hanabi probably could have just flashed out yeah. of the situation. Perhaps he was a little bit afraid of the uh, Brawl Melt, because notice how it went in the trajectory of his flash positioning. So perhaps he was sitting there anticipating the flash to come out, and then uh, he was afraid of that Brawl Melt. Yeah, it's hard to know if he would have been able to get out or not with the Brawl Melt and the calling still available. Uh, either way, certainly had rather TP'd in a little bit early. You might be able to actually dissuade that Completely dive agree, yeah. or punish it. Um, but it is a nice rotation there from 
Big Coro and Pallet, they have, to me, been the standout players for this PvB squad. And getting that early Blade of the Rune King for Big Coro is going to feel great. And while Pallet and Big Coro did get that first blood towards the top side, Betty and Xiao Xi secured the first Tower Blood towards the bot side and got all those plates only shared between two people. So a lot of gold is sitting on right now, the bot lane of the Flash Walls. So they're feeling pretty comfortable and pretty happy. But while the bot lane's doing well, the top lane's in a difficult spot. Bilgewater, Cutlass, and the Seeker's Arm Guard, not where you want to see your Akali in the early game. Yes, the Seeker's make sense, but usually you want that gut blade, you want that healing so you can be a consistent threat. Now Hanabi forced into defensive itemization very early on, but the good news is his team is starting to put a lot more pressure on the top side. Yeah, and, and the gun blade certainly you know, is a little bit delayed, but should be Arrows, okay. Huge chunk of damage there. Zuhao definitely going to try to find the kill here, but the body block on the Prey Seeker will stop anything from going down. Xiaosi now Zero stepping forward. That's going to be Betty taken out. Huge damage coming in from the Aatrox. The Zin Zhao just deleted. Now going to walk forward. The point and click. The double kill coming through, though. In the meantime, on the bottom side, we have to get the replay on that one, but it's kills across the map. And this is what we were waiting for. Blood finally spills between the two teams as kills drop top and kills drop bot. Somehow, Big Coro was able to find a kill onto Hanabi, which had to be picked back up by Rather. While all that was going on, Zeros was committed to defending that top tower. He burnt the ultimate, he burnt the flash, he finds the execution onto Betty, and then it's just a matter of cleanup for the duo of Zuhao and Zeros. Rather now running the mid lane, looking for the 1v1 exchange with Null, but a lot of sustained damage coming from Null already looking quite terrifying with just the Archangel staff. Yeah, certainly sitting in a, in a good position already. I think you are starting to see some of this additional farm, this additional power on the Rek side really paying dividends. Zero starting this off very, very well, landing the Infernal Chains on Betty. He is not able to flash out before getting pulled back in. And then Zero simply flashes in on top of Betty, finishing him off. And Boogie just getting crushed through there by Zhu Hao. Shao see a nice flash over the wall to escape. But two quick kills there, and then down on the bottom side, Pallet and Big Coro look for a dive. Yeah, so it wasn't actually the 1v1. I definitely misread the situation. It was a two versus one. Hanabi with the level 10 using the Shroud, but it then just about runs out, and that's when PvB used this opportunity to set up the play. They have the Brawl Ultimate available. They chain CC the Akali. Easily done. But what they don't realize is that Rather is making his way down, and he has more than enough damage <laughs> to get the cleanup kills. Yeah. Protobell and the passive just... Instantly deleted, of course, not what you want to see. We know what it looks like when a Silas takes over the game. The good news is there's not quite as many terrifying alts on the side of PBB for him to take away, but still a difficult position to be sure. Yeah, it definitely is. Rather, going to be the nice beneficiary of those two kills. And is at a pretty strong point in the game. Uh, certainly, though, I think PvB pretty happy with their position. They're up one and a half K. They have been the ones feeling like they are now kind of speeding up the pace of the game a little bit, making some of these more proactive plays, trying to start to attack Flash Wolves here, who feel like they want to split the map, who don't really want to fight until that Gunblade is complete, I think, on the, on the Akali. Uh, because as you said, you are kind of put a little bit behind the curve when you are going for that early defensive itemization. And like you were mentioning just before, PvP playing much more aggressive. What we saw them be very successful with against IG on day one, returning to a bit of that. Not quite as explosive. Doesn't look like Flashwolves are quite as willing to match pace for pace here in the way that IG was. But PvP taking control, using that lane lane pressure, setting up for this Infernal on the bottom side that is just now spawning. The question is, will Flashwolves try and take the fight? Well. We can see that uh, PvP do have priority bot, and they just cleared out the wave mid. So they have all five members here and in full control. A fight here could be risky. TP coming in, Betty immediately going to get targeted out. They know how good his Callista is. It's not going to get the chance to push a single button. The fight quickly it's going to flash wolves with Hanabi. Trying to find the execution on the back side. Rather, in the midst of everybody, a lot of AoE damage in the silence. because he heal up? Not, not enough to survive there in the midst of five on the side of PvP. All five members left standing as three go down on the side of flash wolves. We talked about how this could have been risky for Flash Falls. It was Fongbu Buffalo that had the positional advantage, and all they had to do was choke Flash Falls out as they forced themselves into that narrow corridor. Beautifully done by Fongbu to identify the mistake, punish it, and find themselves three quick kills and an Infernal. Yeah, that was just huge for Fongbu Buffalo. They are now so far ahead off of that. Trying to attack into this corridor, as you called out. This is warded up by PvP. They're trying to walk through this into the Braum. They're going to get CC'd up, AoE'd out by both Zeros and Pallet. So much damage coming through here. Even Null able to start kind of cleaving through this team. Rather with a pretty nice flank and the stolen Lucian ultimate does get a good amount of damage out. He's able to get a lot of AoE out in the middle of the team, but they've already lost the fight. And the thing you got to remember is that neither team has a true frontline. 
which means that outside of the supports, it's surprisingly easy to dive onto the back line, which means a lot of responsibility goes onto like the Braum and the Nautilus to actually keep the AD carry alive. But unfortunately, when you do that and you just walk into that funnel point, it's very easy for Zeros to just say, well, okay, I'll just dive onto your back line and what do I have to be afraid of? And the moment he's on there, the rest of the team is very quick to follow. Yeah, I definitely agree. It just felt like a, a little bit of an over kind of exertion there from, from Flash Wolves. It felt like they were a little bit desperate on the play. You know, you don't need to kind of really force for that. And if you are going to, you want to be a little bit better set up because, yes, the Infernal is important, but, you know, Rather was not really in at the same time as the team. Yep. Everyone needs to be making that collapse at the same time, especially with this sort of composition where it is really kind of about that initial punch where you're diving in and you're overwhelming your opponents. And now we can see the PVB are very comfortably in the lead. So Flash want to find an opportunity. They're going to have to play on the back foot for at least the next few minutes here. PVB leads across the board. The Lucian now ahead of the Callista, something we did not expect to be saying when you saw Betty's Callista locked in. But it has been a difficult game. While he may be able to fight the Lucian toe-to-toe, -to -toe, the Aatrox has had his number across all these fights. I remember how we talked a lot about these compositions where they're actually very similar. Two very strong side lanes, both scale pretty well. So a team that has the early advantage can then snowball very quickly because the enemy solo laners cannot match the power that your solo laners have been able to build up. Yeah, and you kind of just get stuck under your turret. There's not a lot of really good safe wave clear. Yes, you know, Silas and, and Akali can wave clear, but you're putting yourself in a very dangerous position to actually move forward and do so, especially when there's a tremendous amount of CC on the other side. So it is for Flash Wolves, kind of this difficult situation now where they are up against it. Immediately going to force the stolen Aatrox ultimate out of Rather. He will back off, but this does mean the bot lane tower can be taken out. Juha will grab the solo gold there, it looks like. And we'll retreat there, rather. Half of it going over to Rise, and things just looking very good, very comfortable for PvB now that they have this 4k lead. Yeah, it certainly is, and this is a really big deal for PvB and the... Uh uh, and the VCS region as well. Let's not forget Worlds last year. It was PvB that took down Flash Wolves that then forced them into the tiebreaker against G2 that ultimately cost them a spot uh, moving on to the quarterfinals at Worlds. And uh, for a long time, the VCS have wanted to establish themselves as one of the major regions. And while they are quite confidently in that sixth place spot, consistently beating out many of the other emerging regions, they really wanted to break into that top five position. And a big win against Flash Wolves today could begin that uh, discussion. Enemy kill on Hanabi potentially to kick it off. Hanabi needs to find a way out of this fight, but he runs face first into Null. Just barely going to miss on the ultimate there. Call using the second dash to escape. Feels like Null was caught a bit off guard that that's the route Hanabi choose, or chose to escape. Yeah, Pallet not quite able to connect, but still it is PvB making these collapses on the side lanes. They're trying to extend their vision forward a little bit, trying to start you know, getting control on their opponent's side of the jungle and, and kind of using this to try to collapse to a side lane, push that solo laner back, assault the turret, and that's what they did a couple times on the bottom side to knock down one. Now looking like they are trying to head over towards this blue buff, but Flash Wolves aren't lying in wait. Boogie has to be careful. Rather, just going to have to back off. We'll be able to steal away the Rek'Sai ultimate, but we'll have to give up the blue buff. Another one donated over to Null. We check in on the advantages between lanes. You can see, you know, a bit of a catch up here coming from Zen Zhao. Has been able to grab over some of that jungle XP, but the Lucian's just getting further and further ahead. In top lane, the Aatrox is still quite comfortable in the 1v1 matchup. I mean, my biggest concern now for Flash Rolls is that their comp is very squishy. So while a lot of core atomization has come out with things like the Gunblade, the two items for Callista, yes, this is very good. Uh, the fact is, they have to work through two health bars on Aatrox, and they have to get through a Braum, which pr proposes, um, provides a lot of defensive utility. So uh, I think they need to look for picks like this uh, before they can really start uh, trying for any fights later on. And not quite enough burst damage to rather there, but Big Coro may be able to change that as he steps forward. And just the defensive utility you mentioned from Braum, concussive blows onto Assassins just cuts them down across team fights. Yeah, that chunk at least will send Zeros back, but this is another Infernal spawning, and it does feel like PvP are the ones establishing control over this dragon area. We saw what happened last time when Flash Wolves tried to kind of push forward through the Braum and through a lot of these PvP members to take the fight. And they're looking like they want to have it one more time, but Lucian and, and Aatrox are not actually with the team right now to punish as they walk in. Yeah, and props to uh, Fongfu Buffalo. Notice how uh, if we... Notice how on the minimap they're keeping pushed up both the mid lane and the bot lane, which makes it very difficult for the Flash Wolves to actually get into a position to contest. Oh, well, now they're all going to face shake rather. Walking to the 1v1, have to respect the Rek'Sai ultimate, but so much shielding already coming in from the Rise. Not afraid whatsoever. Zero's now going to be on the hunt here. Hanabi waiting around. The Rise is going to come in as well. 
Darken Blade, where's he going to go? Boogie now running, trying to make his way out of the team by Hanabi on the retreat as well. The Rexile ultimate comes out. Null, very much in danger here. Rather trying to find the kill, but he can't. Null outmaneuvering so far, forced to use the stopwatch. Betty now chasing down the fight. He's still alive. Betty untouched on the backside. Have to respect the Aatrox, but Flash Wolves are taking over the fight. That's two shutdowns coming in. Yeah, PvP just really over chasing there. They get punished as they are just walking into the meat grinder, the full Flash Wolves squad waiting outside of that tri brush. Punishing them so, so heavily. Big Koro just wandered into the middle of the team, gets hit by the Nautilus Alt, and that's your strongest member, pretty much. Solution was not able to contribute whatsoever. They're actually looking to try to take the Baron potentially here. They do have the Callista. This is going to go down very quickly. The Nautilus can just tank this one up for the time being. King's going down. Aatrox is going to back off. Lucian potentially going to look to contest, but for now, Flash Wolves completely uncontested. The Callista going to make this so incredibly easy, but the TP is coming in. Flash Wolves. Maybe looking to pick off members, maybe willing to commit to the full fight, but I don't know if they have enough time to make it into this pit. 3k and dropping the Baron should go to Flash Wolves. Can he find the Miracle Stealer? No, Zinzao is going to take it down. The fight breaks out, but PB are on the back foot. Rather in trouble, but has the Aatrox ultimate available. The Resurrection coming out. Shaosi trying to make his way out to safety, but Betty now in trouble. Rek'Sai goes under, comes out. Betty goes down. Boogie next on the menu. Flash Wolves are falling apart in the fight. The contest from PvP may just save the day. Two members walking away with the Baron. Two back-to-back -back fights where Flash Wolves take the first one, and while PVB take the second, they end up losing the Baron. So, Azel, let's just focus in on what you were talking about, how Fongfu just overchased. They just kind of ran through this choke point, overcommitting onto Rather, and just keep your eyes on the positioning of Betty. He's going to come in through the top side of the lane, completely unthreatened, and freely building up stack after stack after stack. And he's just going to melt through this Fongfu lineup. And look at Picoro here. He's just kind of wandering through the team, almost trying to retreat down through the lane. He wanders out of the tribrush into the lane, immediately gets ulted, has to stopwatch, then just flash back to where he came from. Certainly misplaying the fight, and while the Baron does get secured, PvP have respawned and do rejoin the fight. And here we can see again, Betty continues to be untouched. Uh, Su Zhao finally dives onto the backline and does shut him down, but the damage has already been done, the Baron has been secured, and they walk away with two members. And now, when it was a game that was so heavily favored for Fongfu Buffalo, a game where they were in vast control for the majority of it, They've now just thrown it away off of a very simple mistake. Yeah, I mean, still though, getting the, the four kills, the dragon, the double infernal advantage, you know, they are still, you know, three, four K ahead in this game. So I do still think they are in a good position, but definitely, you know, the Baron is one of the win conditions that PVB would have wanted to try to help close this one out because likewise, they also don't have incredible sieging and you are more reliant on things like the Baron buff to be able to really crack the base. I think for Fongfu fans, the concerns start to come in in the same way that they did in the Team Liquid series. You know, where they built up these leads, and then they would make these foolish mistakes that just gave away their advantages. And against a team like the Flash Rules, you can't make those mistakes. So hopefully moving forward, you're right. That, that mistake will not cost them the game. They're still in a great position, and they can still win, but they can't afford to keep doing this. Otherwise, the Flash Rules will come back. And so much comes down to execution, because we saw in the Baron fight damage graphic how much Zero was able to do when the members are grouped up like that. The meat grinder of the Aatrox alone is such a huge threat to the squishier members of this team, so execution feels like it gets more and more crucial as we get later. And yes, Akali has the damage threat, but if she gets caught out very quickly, can just get eliminated in the fight. We've also seen what a Silas can do when his items start to come through. Cats had a pop-off performance last game, and now he's sitting at 3-1-3. and three on rather Silas with the Zonyas about to be completed, that level 16 mark about to come through where you can start stealing multiple ultimates. Imagine the Braum ultimate into the Lucian ultimate, then ending the fight with the Xeros ultimate. Like, there's so much utility in this ultimate from Silas that these fights become a lot harder to play out. And reminder that both these teams are O2 right now. That yes, they're fighting each other, that yes, it is the LMS versus the BCS, but it is also MSI and rising up in these standings is crucial. An O3 start is an absolutely brutal way to start the group stage. Yeah you really do want to start picking up these wins, try to claw your way back up those standings if you want to kind of be able to challenge uh, for that top four and, and make it to Taipei for that knockout stage. And the importance as well, PVB playing on their home soil and Flash Wolves, if they are able to make it to Taipei, would get the chance to play in front of their home crowd. So massive, massive for both of these guys. Now, we can see the Dragon being set up for once again. A lot of action has been happening around these objectives, but before it, PVB are looking for a pick. Gonna be a lot of tools to make it out to safety. Zeros chasing forward, but just a bit of damage laid down. Only gets the one sweet spot. Again, though, it is PVB, kind of first ones 
to the scene, and they are going to look to turn. Looking for the engage. Massive Braum ultimate. Luchin locked up in the backside, but immediately the coin's going to come out. Not going to connect to the boogie, though. Able to block a little bit of the damage, but Pal and Koro in the midst of the team. Betty, no chance left to survive. Desperate to make it out of this one. Koro going to take him down. Double kill for the Luchin, but he's caught the meat grinder here. Zero's still going to look to fire back. The stolen Silas ultimate may not be enough to keep Rather alive. Zero's still desperate on the chase. The calling invisible for now. Shousey going to be the sacrificial Nautilus here in the exchange. Zero's chasing forward, but at the end of the day, just going to be a two for three exchange. Yeah, well, it is the, the two PvB soul laners standing strong. They actually can't finish off a lot of these kills. They will now start up the dragon, though, and should be able to grab it. So pretty even trade across the board. Plus one kill for Flash Wolves, but it will be the dragon going the way of PvP. And it's such a crazy fight as well, because at the beginning of the game, something we talked a lot about was both teams have strong solo laners that are going to scale up to be strong split pushes, but neither of these teams want to do that. They nope. just want to 5v5. And, fight. and so you end up in this choke point where it's all about who can deal the most damage. And the thing is, Rather's in the thick of things, but he's just sustaining so much damage. Remember, he's picking up all these ultimates. He has the Aatrox to get the revive, but Null is left untouched. So it's just a matter of the damage dealers diving onto the AD carriers, trying to shut them down. The solo lane is coming up big, and Hanabi buying time. Zeros buying time. Null buying time, and then ultimately they bought too much time, and no one ends up killing anyone. <laughs> you see across the fight, the rise only continues to get more and more terrifying. Nullis had some monster performances across the playing stage. This might be his first in the group stage where he really does get to pop off the rise. I think if you don't get the perfect setup, this champion is just horrifying to play against. It's not even an alt that Silas can steal to, to really match him. Yeah, I mean, especially when you're looking over at a squad that is four melee champions, they are going to be yeah. stacked up. And what he just did to that wave, he can look to do to a team yeah. fight. <laughs> you want to be AOing through that. Lucian, who has been the big target now for Flash Wolves, has a GA. That is going to make him much more difficult to take down. Zuhao has just finished his GA as well. So now you have to deal with triple revive when you're counting the Aatrox ultimate in as well. You're looking at this extremely strong rise here too. And it does become very difficult, but critically rather has hit level 16 and can start to get multiple out. Boogie trying to fish for the fight. The TP has been forced out. If Flash will back away here, it will just be a good advantage to pick that one up uncontested. TP being used, a solid start, but Flash Wolves may continue to fish for the fight. Shousey throws out the hook, will not connect. Yeah, I mean, a neutral objective is up. It's time to group and fight. Yep. We've seen so far this game. Baron's on the map. Let's go, boys. Why are we even running teleports? We don't need them. All oh, right, it's just to, to get, get back to, to the, the Baron. Faster. Yeah. yeah, of course. When they <laughs> die and respawn, they, yeah. they want to TP in. Shousey, though, has to be careful. Arrow's throwing down a bit of damage over the wall, trying to hook out to safety. Will get pulled out by Betty there. Null now stepping forward, rather going to try to disengage with the stolen Brahmal. Buys a bit of time, and both sides are going to back off, but a lot of cooldowns burned on the side of Flash Wolves. Yeah, Boogie was a bit out of position there, so Flash Wolves weren't confident committing to the fight, but now the re-engage coming out from... Flash forward. Buys tries to buy a bit of time as the Shroud off cooldown. Hanabi not going to use it quite yet. Immediately the re-engage. Boogie stepping in forward onto the front line, but he's just hitting the Brahm. Not at all what you want. Big Koro backing off. Null backing up. They're not able to hit anything. They have to be careful. They're respecting the front line of Flash Wolves. They're respecting the dive potential. Flash Wolves are crushing this. That they're absolutely getting destroyed. Big Koro and Null do not have the freedom to do any damage, and that means they're going to give up two for nothing. Yeah, and Flash Wolves come out so heavily on top. Zeros was pushed out of the back of that fight. Pallet and Zuhao go down almost for free, and it's Flash Wolves now starting up the Baron with the Kalista here, looking to take control of this game. And we've seen this one before. Zeros tries to step forward. Big Koro, though, now the one in trouble. Flash Wolves immediately turned a beautiful play. The Rek'Sai coming through. Big Koro, the GA being burned. Null now running for his life. They're going to focus on the AD carry. They're going to take him down, and this time around, they're not looking to sacrifice anything for that Baron. Beautiful stuff from the Flash Wolves, taking their time, not overcommitting to the objective, and running the risk of this rise, demolishing this team in the Baron pit. The rest of Fong who have backed away. They realize they cannot secure this objective, and this will be the second Baron of the game going over to Flash Wolf. A back and forth game. The Gold Graph tells a story. The Baron was contested at first, but a beautiful turnoff from Flash Wolves. They will secure it. They will start to match up the gold and look to go toe to toe with PvP in this late game. Yeah, PvP certainly starting to slip in this game. You can see that gold draft was all PvP the whole time. But again, they are committing to these fights, flashing forward. They do not have everyone with them. Zuhao was not with the squad. You know, Braum is getting focused down, really, before they're getting any damage out whatsoever. Big Coral playing it so far back, and then Zeros is looking for this flank up on the top side of your screen, but he gets pushed out, and, and the fight is over before he's really even able to join. So certainly something left to be desired in these team fights. The coordination has not really been on point in some of these fights where they're not all entering at the same time. Yeah, and 
it's it's a situation that we've seen Fongu Buffalo in before, where they had this advantage. We saw it from the goal graph. They've maintained a big lead over Fire Thralls for the vast majority of this game. But unfortunately, they don't know how to convert that lead into a win. And they end up in this break point with a lot of dancing, a lot of fighting. And Flash Thralls, they've just been steadily scaling up. They've been relying on the advantage that a Silas and an Akali can build once those items start to come through. And now, level 18 on Hanabi, level 17 on rather. Three items finished for both of them. Four items done for the Callista. Flash Wolves have just gotten stronger and stronger, and they're consistently outplaying PvP in the fights. And with the power of the Baron, they have been able to match the gold lead. They will extend it. They will be able to find a gold advantage here in this game. Yes, the double and the infernal. Double Mountain and the Infernal, Double Infernals and the Mountain. Four PvP are good for them overall, but you have to feel one more fight gets fumbled then immediately Flash Wolves can just close the game. Yeah, definitely the case, and, and it's been both teams opting into those fights. No one seems to want to play side lane. No one seems yep. to want to try to split the map or, or look for any sort of other plays. It's all about the 5v5, and if PvP is mis-executing in those 5v5s with the Baron buff on the side of Flash Wolves, one more bad team fight can mean the end of the game potentially. Now they're going to grab the Mountain Drake, and it feels like Flash Wolves know better than to take this fight. Of course, if they want to push for a man advantage, they could try here. Hanami, though, with the TP up and available, would be there for the contest. And at this stage of the game, just goes down far too quickly. Of course, Elder will be an objective to join the map quite shortly. Six minutes away before the teams can contest it, but you have to feel like it's something that PvP need if they want to close out here. So now the game slows down just a little bit. 12 to 12 in kills. The gold has finally equalized but it really doesn't tell the story of this game where Fong Fu has such firm control over like the first 20 minutes. They overcommit onto a single fight, and then this game ends up just being multiple fight after fight after fight, and now Flash Wolves with the Baron. They're the ones that look to set up to try and siege onto the enemy base, but they're not actually pressuring right now. The Baron is gonna be running out in less than a minute, and we're kind of looking at the situation where we're probably gonna be seeing another fight come up soon. Yeah, we definitely could be. And around that Elder, around the next Baron, I think those certainly are going to be the critical objectives. Flash Wolves not trying to push too heavily with this Baron buff. You know, we're happy to just back off with a minute and a half left and take that Mountain Dragon reset on the map. They seem to be pretty content to play this game a little bit more slowly, and things have been going in their favor to their credit, so we'll see if they are able to be matched in these later stages. And impressive that their team fighting prowess has allowed them to claw back in so many of these exchanges because when we saw Betty put so far down on what we thought was a comfort pick in the Callista and has looked like one of these late game team fights, uh, it's, a, it's a really good sign for this Flash Wolves lineup overall moving forward as they face some of the perceived stronger reaches. That said, however, rather taking away the ultimate and setting up for fight, you can see PvP having a lot more hesitation as we move weather into the game. Not a ton of vision control on their side of the map. Yeah, they are kind of getting corralled back into their base, and with Zeros up on the top side of the map, they wanted to play it a little bit more defensively. They do have those waves pushing for them now, and it looks like Zeros is going to continue to head back up to that top side of the map and will perhaps shove it in, but there is some kind of you know, hesitation in what exactly he does want to do, so we'll see if they will just wait for the next objective and commit to another 5v5. I feel like every fight that has happened, Azale has been around an objective. So it'd be weird if one happened without one. <laughs> and with the Baron spawning in about a minute and 45, Elder spawning in roughly three minutes, we're likely going to see those being the next priority. And we've talked a lot about it, but I kind of want to look at how these fights are going to be playing out. How do both these teams actually win these fights? Because what we've seen a lot of is Null and Xeros are the biggest damage dealers on the side of PvP. Yes, the Lucian is obviously a threat that you have to respect, but honestly, you're kind of looking at these two to be able to threaten someone like Betty and to be able to outplay Rather if they want to come out ahead of these fights. But for Flash Wolves, the biggest concern, I think, oh, the biggest way in which they'll win is just get Rather into the thick of things and just have him absorb all this pressure so that he can steal away Xeros' ultimate to then bring the revival back and he can use all this sustain to just soak up a lot of the damage. Yeah, I think him alongside Boogie with his ultimate, he can actually, you know, absorb a lot of pressure there. The Shroud from Hanabi is going to be very big and actually zoning out these carries. So, you know, utilizing those three ultimates in combination with also throwing in the Nautilus and pulling him out, you know, with that Callista ultimate, they have no true front line, but they all have ways in which they can threaten the back line and make them respect these kind of areas of power, so to speak, for their side. It's something I want to point out really quickly, though, is the Duskblade actually on Zeros, which is <laughs> such an aggressive build. You know, you normally see things that are a little bit more defensive, things along the lines of the, of the Death Dance. Uh, this is all about that initial hit. You come out of, out of vision, you have that initial proc of damage, along with Deathbringer Stance, and your first auto will do a tremendous amount of burst. 
Uh, it's the uh, ghost play that we can sometimes see if you're going for the left which, you know, often makes sense because it's that extra bit of mobility so that you can make set up those flanks before. But you're right, it's just all about the damage. You don't need to run fast if you can one shot. <laughs> also, Betty, it has a built in sweeper, so really it's a team. Ah, right, right, right. Sort of right. Macro, macro, <laughs> macro decision, vision control is the name of the this game. This is the sight zone in this game. <laughs> <laughs> we'll clear out some of that vision now. But my biggest fear for the side of PvB at this stage is rather getting off multiple ultimates in a team fight. And when everyone has burst on one side, not usually possible with long extended team fights where he is able to take the Aatrox off. They're just very light. Baron. He can get Let's go. Out. TP coming in the fight. The arena has been laid down. Boogie though stepping on the back side has to be careful. Immediately the Aatrox Skulls is coming out. Pallet blocking so much damage to the back line. Unthreatened thus far. In goes Hanabi. He's trying to clear up some space. Goes Golden as well. Now it's been all has been caught out. The rise has been isolated. The shutdown is massive. Immediately Flash will start to take control of the fight. All eyes on Big Coral, but Bougie is buying time for the rest of his team. Pallet now running for the hills. Rather in trouble, but he has not gone down yet. The Rek'Sai ultimate stolen away. Most likely will be used to chase down Big Coral. He will fall in this fight if Rather wants to pursue. There it goes. Goes under, comes right back up. Easy kill for the side of Flash Wolves. And only if you have on the opposite side, PvB have fallen apart. It ends up just being a front to back fight from both sides. It's hilarious how Rather steals away Xerus' ultimate. Both the Aatrox and the Silas then use that ultimate, and then they both just die. And then they walk away from the fight, they then revive, but then it becomes this insane, like, brawl in the middle where all of the carries are trying to dive onto the backline, and it became a feud between can Big Koro stay alive or can Betty stay alive? And I think Flash Wolves are honestly just doing a better job of actually consistently getting out damage. If you watch Big Koro and Null in this fight, it is mostly retreating. It is very little damage actually coming out of the Lucian, whereas Betty is consistently getting these auto attacks off. His team is doing a better job of actually rotating through the cooldowns and creating pressure. And now Flash Wolves stacking up those spears on the Elder Dragon. This is going to be theirs, no problem. Two stacks on the Elder Dragon, huge combat buff moving forward, and the ping's already going down onto the Baron. They won one fight in that pit, they want to go for one more. Major yeah. cooldown still missing on the side of PBB. No flash, no heal for Big Core, no flash for Pallet. It's gonna be a tough fight to win. I mean, how can you really contest if you're losing the 5v5 and now they have the Elder to boot? That just makes it so damn difficult and you can really snowball the Elder very easily into this Baron. We'll see if PvP is going to be able to actually set anything up to turn. We're going to see how a lot of immediate CC coming in. The GA is there, but it's not going to mean much. Zeros, will he try to go over the wall? Will they try to keep this fight going? It's going to be the pick onto the jungler. Flash Wolves move right back into that pit. And with the jungler gone, the risk of a smite still has diminished as well. So PvP are just forced to play on the defensive. They're going to have to hold the line against an Elder Dragon, Baron-empowered Flash Wolves who have managed to claw their way back into the game. I think it's going to be honestly really hard for them to do, given the way that things have been going. They have you know, not really shown any willingness to try to play the side lanes. It has been all about the 5v5, and Flash Wolves have won three to four straight 5v5s, now have the two most powerful buffs in the game, which is joint, just going to put them at such an advantage already. Uh, it's going to take something kind of special, I feel like, from PvB at this point, who have been struggling to get damage out from their carries in these 5v5s. And props to Rather this game, who only having one death in the amount of crazy fights that we have seen, even though at a deficit, he's been very consistent in how he's been playing the Silas, along with Betty, who after didn't wasn't able to find an early game lead, actually struggled going down 0-2 early on, has been very impactful in these fights. And I feel like this duel of Rather and Betty have come up huge uh, throughout this game and, and put Flash Wolves in this position. In another game, Game where we see Silas be a hugely defining factor. But the fight breaks out the mid lane. Rather going to use the ultimate pallet. Goes golden. Will be able to take it out to safety. And all saving his teammate there. Well played for PvP to find the retreat. But Flash was in absolute control in the mid lane. Yeah, that was actually very nicely played. The Rise ultimate layered over the stopwatch from the Braum to actually pull him to safety. A good engage still, though, from Flash Rolls to get those cooldowns out, and they are pushing in multiple lanes here. Utilizing that Baron buff, they have their top lane actually stacking up and looking like it's going to be pushing in as well. The Jaws are kind of closing in here, it feels like, on PvB. Sinking the bot wave and the mid wave, trying to find a break in the armor, trying to find an advantage over PvB in the fight. They already have Baron. The Elder Dragon buff will start to fade away, however, and they're struggling push for anything more. We talked about the difficulties of sieging with both of these compositions. Flash Roll is not quite confident enough to go for the full dive, and Xeros throwing down a bit of poke damage in the exchange. Stage is slow and steady. Flash Roll don't want to overcommit and dive, run the risk of giving the game back. 
Notice how they're waiting for that mid wave to collapse in first and then they're rotating between the two. I feel like this is where they should utilize the split push power that their composition have. Threaten all three waves rather than just two, but they're committed to grouping up. And they're gonna look to set up this siege in the mid tier tower now. It is slowly going down thanks to the cannon minion and Betty's getting a couple hits off. And you can see how hard it is for Aatrox to get damage down onto Betty. Such a tanky build, a lot of lifesteal coming in from the Callista. Mid lane breaks, that means the inhibitor will follow. All of PvP now forced to the bottom side just to bend one more. But breaking over that single inhibitor is going to give Flash Wolves a very large standing advantage for the next five minutes. Yeah, and it gives Flash Wolves the ability to threaten a flank. You can have Rather kind of escorting in this wave in the middle lane and threatening to come from behind and actually assault those back lines from the side of PvP. But Flash Wolves. Now with a Baron Cannon here, that turret already very, very low. It feels like PvB may have to make the call to go for some sort of a move, but I think Flash Wolves are just going to wait for the mid lane super minions to come in, for someone to respond to that from PvB, and then look to make a move. And you can see how hard it is for PvP to even step forward and take down this empowered cannon minion. They're using everything they have, which includes a Rek'Sai Prey Seeker. All of the Q abilities between every champion on their team just to limit that one down. But the tower will break anyway, and Flash Wolves now barreling into the base, rather waiting on that flank, as you mentioned, Zale. Trying to find an option, see if this is going to be where PvP decide to engage. It only gets harder from here. Losing a second inhibitor would be disastrous. Shao Si, though, the member that has been picked out, Betty trying to reset the fight. Fate's call. Will they keep going? Flash Wolves just going to back away. They know they have the advantage. They don't want to risk anything here. I feel like Flash Wolves, they've been playing the fights extremely well so far. They don't need to back off. Here we go. Hook goes in. Not all can hit multiple members. Hanabi immediately into the backside. Goes invisible. Big Coral not able to fight comfortably. Hanabi taking down Pallet. Flash Wolves are just rolling over PvB. Absolute dominance. Hanabi put down in the early game, but getting his vengeance in this final fight. Flash Wolves now poised to end the game. Slow and controlled. They found a way back. The triple kill for the Akali. Zeros doing what he can to survive, but it will not matter. Flash Wolves find their first win. Big pickup for the Flash Wars, finally making their way onto the board. Things looked a little scary in the early game, but we highlighted it. The Akali, the Silas, they do have that scaling potential. We thought it was going to be a battle of the side laners. We thought it was going to be the 1 3 1. No, it was just team fighting. It was grouping up. It was brawling. It was chaos. We got the bloodbath that we wanted. We were expecting it early, but it was a 40 minute drawn out game of both these teams constantly going back and forth, where Flash Wars eventually come out on top. Yeah, Flash Wolves certainly outperforming PvB in those late game team fights, able to execute very, very well. And the Fungvu Buffalo unwilling to show any other sort of kind of adaptation.